The number one remedy for a toxic liver is something that you need to know about simply because most people have toxicity in the liver and they don't even know it yet. And that is because it takes years, decades of damage to the liver before you even notice a symptom. Now, some of the first signs of a liver problem are yellow eyes, yellow skin, nausea, little red dots on your skin, and just basically the lack of get up and go. So the cool thing is there is this one thing that can greatly counter a lot of different toxic effects. For example, you might drink some alcohol, right? And you wake up with a hangover. This remedy will eliminate that hangover, okay? It reduces the damage of alcohol to your liver. It also counters bad effects from smoking, right? So here you're smoking a cigarette or you get secondhand smoke. It goes into your lungs. It goes into your bloodstream. And guess where it ends up? in your liver. So this remedy can counter the damage from smoking. Let's say you have a toxic solvent that's on your skin, ends up in your bloodstream, ends up in the liver. Now, this remedy can also handle other things like ibuprofen, which is a little bit different. It's not an anti-inflammatory. It's just something that gets rid of pain and it can help you with the fever. Then you have the toxicity from chemotherapy, radiation therapy, all the chemicals from your environment, including herbicides, pesticides, insecticides, fungicides. And this remedy is called NAC. I'm really glad that it's still in the market because they did take it off the market for a period of time because it's actually used as a drug, but it's a natural remedy. So what does NAC really do? Well, it does several things. Number one, it's a key nutrient to replenish something called glutathione which is a very important antioxidant in your entire body, including the liver. Now, glutathione acts as an antioxidant that helps to counter free radical damage. Now, let me just kind of explain antioxidants and free radical damage. So if you were to envision spinning a plate around in a circle, right, and you had a few weights that were balanced on each side of the plate, it could spin very symmetrically. But if you took one of the weights off and you spun it, it's no longer balanced. Just think about what that's doing. That's creating a lot of unpaired electrons, which then create a lot of destruction in the body. So the antioxidant donates an electron to give it to this free radical to make it no longer a free radical to balance out that plate that's spinning. Now, here's the problem. The antioxidant now is lost electron. So it has to regenerate that and it gets help from other antioxidants. And this is why you don't just have one antioxidant. Like in the liver, you have glutathione, you have vitamin E, you have vitamin C, and they all work together to help donate electrons. And one of the cool things about NAC is it helps to regenerate glutathione, which then help to regenerate other antioxidants. NAC also increases and enhances this other thing in the liver called phase one, phase two detoxification. So this phase one, phase two detoxification can take a fat-soluble poison and turn it into a water-soluble harmless particle. Guess what? NAC can enhance that process in the liver. NAC also helps to regenerate liver tissue. It can also help reduce or prevent the liver cells from committing suicide, which is kind of like the liver self-destructing. And especially I would recommend it if you're on any medications at all, or if you are consuming alcohol or smoking or exposed to any type of toxicity. Now, I wanna actually take this to the next level. I wanna show you how to make NAC very, very potent. First thing is to always take it on an empty stomach. It's gonna work better. Secondly, you wanna take several doses throughout the day. NAC is even more potent if you add it with vitamin C, and selenium. The last thing I want to mention about this is that when you take NAC, your next meal should be high in protein. That's going to help increase more amino acids to help this uh, glutathione work a little bit better. And in addition to the animal protein that I would recommend, I would also recommend doing the cruciferous vegetables, right? Because it's loaded with antioxidants. And so that way you have plenty of extra additional things that your body can draw from to actually help the liver. Now, if you have not seen my uh, glutathione video, you might wanna watch that 
I put it right here. Check it out. I wanted to do a video on glutathione uh, specifically because I had a glutathione deficiency. And I'm going to share with you a little bit about what I found on my body because of course, if you have the deficiency, you want to really understand it and do a deep dive on this topic. Glutathione is the major uh, antioxidant in all of the cells. It helps you detoxify heavy metals. It helps with the free radical damage. It helps with all the extra oxidation that occurs, especially if you're exposed to a lot of pollution and chemicals and mold and things like that. So I want to share with you how to have enough glutathione without having to take the supplement. The one thing you need to know is that your body actually makes glutathione. The only time I would take a supplement related to this is if you had Tylenol poisoning and that depletes your glutathione and really puts your liver at risk for damage. You would want to take uh, a supplement called NAC, which is a precursor to build up your glutathione, but they would normally give you that in an emergency room setting. Let's take a look at some symptoms from a glutathione deficiency. When someone's deficient in glutathione, they're going to have a problem sleeping. They're going to have a problem with fatigue. They're going to have a problem with brain fog. They're going to have a problem with their mood, maybe depression, anxiety. Now let's jump over to the causes of a glutathione deficiency. Alcohol, being on a very, very low calorie diet, overtraining. And in my case, that was my number one cause because I pretty much eat really healthy, but I do exercise and sometimes too much. And if you are a vegan, the need for glutathione is going to go higher, primarily because it's very difficult to get certain proteins if you're a vegan. Even if you're not a vegan, if you're on low amounts of protein, that could be the reason why your glutathione is low. So glutathione is made out of three amino acids. One of them is glycine. Now with the other amino acids, there's this whole chemical reaction that occurs. And the only reason I want to bring up a little piece of this puzzle is because between 40 and 50% of the population uh, they have a problem with this mutation of a certain gene called MTHFR, a gene that makes it difficult to deal with synthetic versions of B12 and get the, um, the natural version, which is methylcobalamin. Number two, folic acid. If you're consuming a supplement or a lot of supplements with a lot of folic acid, you'd want to um, not take those anymore and get a methylfolate B9. Apparently for my genetics, uh, I have a hard time absorbing choline. So I have to eat more foods high in choline, which is uh, liver and egg yolk. You can also get choline from certain cruciferous vegetables as well. But the only reason I'm bringing it up is that it's not a simple topic. There are complexities and I'm going to give you the general gist of what you should do. And if you still have problems, you might need to go deeper into this uh, and get your genetics tested. What's important to know is that if you have some of the, the signs that you're deficient in glutathione, the next points I'm going to talk about are what you should be focusing on. Number one, getting enough glycine. How can you get glycine? Don't avoid organ meats. Don't avoid the skin on the chicken if you're consuming that or even the skin on fish. Um, one really good way to get enough glycine is to take an entire chicken, the whole thing, put it in a crock pot, boil it down with the bones, the skin, everything, and consume that chicken soup. Glycine is also high in jello. And I'm not talking about the jello that you'd normally get. I would get Knox blocks and you could make your own gelatin, or you can do bone broth that has a good amount of gelatin. And there's a lot of interesting information about glycine, also helping people sleep because it increases glutathione and it helps you detoxify and it helps uh, establish this antioxidant. Number two, making sure you have the methyl version of the B vitamins, uh, B12 and folate. Now, I'm not telling you to take those vitamins, but what I am saying is that uh, you probably want to avoid the synthetic versions if you're taking supplements already, because that can interfere with your ability to use those two vitamins if you have that genetic issue I mentioned. But typically, where do you get B12? Well, animal uh, meat, you're going to get it from that easily. If you're a vegan, you're going to have a problem with B12. But what about folate? Folate is in organ meats, but you're not going to find a lot of folate necessarily in just regular muscle meat. So if you're carnivore, you might want to do organ meats, right? Like liver, beef liver, and things like that. You can also get it from dark leafy green vegetables, okay? 
and I'm talking about folate or methylfolate. Vitamin C is also a precursor for glutathione. So that could come from raw sauerkraut, leafy greens, things like that. Number four, having enough sleep. If you're not sleeping, that could be the reason why you're not getting enough glutathione. It puts a huge stress on the body. Going to bed earlier, trying to sleep in longer, having certain sleep aids is going to be very, very important. Next one, do not over-exercise like I did, okay? I was exercising every single day, like high intensity. If you're doing this high intensity type workout, like running up mountains like I was, do that twice a week, okay? And then the other days, long walks. Walking can help increase glutathione. Marathons or sustained running over long periods of time, long duration is really bad for glutathione. You can really deplete your levels. I already mentioned stress being a factor with depleting your glutathione. So adaptogens are good, or you can do a lot of things to help reduce stress. Um, you can go for walks, do things that uh, help you reduce stress, like listen to music, get into art, do hobbies, like I'm into woodworking. All that is great for stress. And also physical work is awesome for stress because it takes your mind off um, what you're worried about. Number seven, I already mentioned this, but I'll mention it again, sufficient protein. This also includes uh, not having enough calories. So some people I know are doing too much fasting. You have to be kind of healthy to fast in a way. And I'm talking about if you're run down and your body's depleted and you push yourself and do fasting uh, when you don't feel good. That's what I'm talking about. If you do fasting and you feel good, then that means it's working, right? Your body can handle it. But if you try to force yourself to do a prolonged fast and you feel like crap, you're not ready for that. You probably need to back off and work up to that. Now, I already mentioned this too, carbohydrates, okay? If your carbohydrates are extremely low, like zero, and your body is also weakened and you have some of these other issues, you may want to uh, increase the amount of carbohydrates to about 50 grams. So maybe berries would help you, but that could be the reason because that a little bit of carb can actually help raise the insulin, which can potentially help you absorb more amino acids. Sulfur-based vegetables like cruciferous can help you also increase glutathione. And seafood to help get the trace minerals, the zinc, the um, selenium that are all needed as a precursor for glutathione. So now that you know about glutathione, I want you to understand about another extremely important antioxidant, melatonin. And I'm talking about subcellular melatonin. And for that information, check out this video right here.